Are you ready to perform at your highest potential? Welcome to the Performance Matters podcast from GP Strategies, your talent transformation partner. In each episode, we'll interview industry experts and explore best practices and innovative insights to help your organization improve performance. How has this gaming landscape changed from the 1.0 to the to 2.0? Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's kind of start there. And if, if you want to chime in on like, you know, what are the most up-to-date games or and how has that kind of been shifting impact? I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on that. So if you want to have the fire, put on the fire and just kind of reflect back here. We'd love, yeah. we'd love that opportunity, Rich. Well, um, gaming is, uh, has changed a lot. And um, so if I just think about the broader gaming industry as a whole and just give a bit of commentary on that, I think in the last, mm-hmm. um, especially the last five years, um, but, but certainly, you know, over, over a decade or more, a big shift has happened in how AAA studios monetize games. And um, so before, before we go too far, define what a AAA studio is. What's that mean? Uh, a triple a game studio is one um that's put that, that's um basically at the top end the very very top end is like the absolute hollywood level a-list celebrities uh, of uh, the industry right so the studios that are spending hundreds of millions of dollars um and selling you know tens of millions of units um so it's, it's okay the biggest end of the budget scale okay and what they're doing with monetization now is not only so they're putting out games and um, they have a roadmap of how that game is going to be updated over time, how it's going to be kept live through live service updates, how they're going to keep players engaged in the long term and ultimately keep spending money on those games. And a lot of industry commentators are looking at that practice and looking at it with a level of disdain because um a lot of people are saying well you know it's less now about making a fantastic game with a brilliant story and something that makes people want to keep coming back but actually um the, the way that those big studios are keeping players coming back and spending money is through quite aggressive microtransaction um tactics <laughs> So can can they get people to buy the new cosmetic skin for their character? Um, you know stuff like that. So it's 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 small repeated transactions, or it's you know can we get the player to buy the next piece of downloadable content because our game was launched only halfway finished and we want them to buy you know the rest of the product really um you know that and that's not that's a, a somewhat uncharitable way of of describing it, but it's kind of true. And that is all to say, so those big kind of, those big games, those, those AAA games, the AAA gaming studios, it makes me want to look more towards the indie games, the single A uh, studios who in my okay. opinion, are doing much more interesting work. And that's where I get a lot of my inspiration from when I'm thinking about games in a learning context. Um, you know, those, those studios seem to be run with much less of a focus on the monetization and aggressive um, microtransaction strategies. And they're producing absolutely incredible and creative work that is um, really compelling and very inspiring for people like, like us. Yeah, so what's a good example of this? That sounds really interesting. I like the idea of it's more focused on, let's make something engaging, right? Something that has that? What's a what's a highlight that people should put on their checklist? I think one of the ones that uh, I would always jump straight to when talking about really interesting stuff smaller studios are doing that we can learn on would be the game Papers Please. So it's just mm. one of the best examples there is, I think, in turning something that has absolutely no right to be interesting into something really compelling <laughs> <laughs> because it's a game where you are a border guard checking people's immigration paperwork, which doesn't really sound like anything people would want to do for fun. <laughs> um, but it's actually extraordinarily compelling and that's because of the game mechanics, it's because of the writing, um, it's because uh, everything you do in that game is meaningful and it contributes to the story that it's telling uh, and, and the the uh, incentives that it's giving you and the way it's pulling things together. Um, and it, 
it's very much a case study and you know if you can make that interesting you can make anything interesting um and it really sort of pulls you into its world i think and it's something a oh, game i think that well wouldn't played. exist without uh the the kind of constraints that you get with an indie game but it's the fact that uh um you know all you do in that game is uh have your little sort of uh desk where you're checking documents and actually it's a better game for it and i think that's something we can take a lot from as well Oh, that's fantastic. Now, is that a is targeted for mobile or PC? What uh, What's the format for that one? Uh, it's available on both, although I think it does work particularly okay. well as a mobile game. It's a, yeah, it's a, a very good kind of small scale game. Yeah, I oh, think one was released on just about everything. I think it's one of those games that, um, you know, people people say you could run it on like a Casio calculator or something, you know, it's... Uh, it's oh, yeah. Kind of like brilliant, like uh, back to the the Minecraft concept of what is that eight bit yeah. or single bit or something like that. That's kind of cool. Are there any others that you two might uh, recommend folks check out? Well, uh, this isn't. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Rich. Well, no, I was going to say, how long have you got? I mean, if you want, to it, <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an absolutely amazing game that's just been released. Um, now this is going to get a little bit nerdy, but um, there's a game that's come out called Chance of Senar. Uh, chance spelt C H A N T S, chance of Senar, and it's um, okay it's where you have to discover and learn a um, a mysterious language um, as you play. Uh, so uh, nothing is in English; it's all in this um, you know made up language, and the player discovers it as they play through. And um, it's been the source of quite a lot of our discussion lately. You know, Emma and I were talking about it just earlier on. Um, about uh, a rise of a type of game called a knowledge-based game um, where you make progress through learning and that's a that's an area that we're we're trying to um, explore um, right now oh that's so fan fantastic the performance matters podcast is brought to you by gp strategies together we can create a world where business excellence makes possibilities achievable you can subscribe to the show anywhere you get podcasts or listen on our website at gpstrategies.com.